triggers, EMAs, whatever you want to call them, how I use them, and how you can too. So by the end of the short video, you're going to know how to use them, when to use them, and hopefully be able to trade the market using them. So first of all, if you go to Trading View and you add a indicator, you'll be able to add the EMA and obviously there are different lengths. So depending on the type of EMA you do, um, it is to do with the amount of days. So for example, a 28 moving average will be based off 28 days, a 100 day moving average will be on 100 days and so on and so forth. When it comes to the EMA, it's slightly different to a normal moving average because it um, places a greater significance on more recent price and therefore you tend to see that price likes to respect it that little bit better. So first of all, I'm going to break down the 28 EMA. The EMAs that are in question in this video will be the 28, the 50, the 100 and the 200. You don't have to use these all at the same time. You can use one from this video, two, whatever you want to do, it can be done. So let's start with the 28. It is worth noting the lower the EMA number, the more times it is going to be touched and the more frequent it will be used. Therefore, it can be a little bit risky when looking at trading positions. Now, if we just follow from the left hand side of the screen to the right with, with the moving average, we can see price respected the moving average here. It broke and retested it there. All here, it respected this moving average. You are going to have certain discrepancies where price breaks through like this, but sometimes you will then see it will break back below, retest it like so. So as you can see from this example here, the 28 moving average does quite well with New Zealand dollar JPY. If you then start pairing it with other things, like for example, break and retests, if that's something that you trade, then that also comes into play. You can see here, break and retest of structure with the 28 moving average. Maybe that is something you want to test and work. It's just another form of support and resistance, okay? So depending what you want to do, that is how you would use the EMA. You would accompany it, uh, accompany it with your sells, accompany it with your buys, and therefore be able to find tradable opportunities. If we go up one to the 50, you can see that the 50 moving average is touched less because it's higher, therefore it's not as closely linked with price. However, when price does touch this EMA, you tend to see that there is a nice reaction in the market unless you see a breakout like here or here and even there. So as you can see, the 50 moving average is a very good indication on what price is doing. If price is ranging, then you are going to see the moving average through the middle. If price is in an uptrend, you are going to see that price is above the moving average. And if it's trading below it, you can expect to be sell bias. In my opinion, the 50 EMA is the best EMA to use, especially if you're trading the lower time frames. If we look at the 15 minute, you can see that it's a very good indication on what price does. But it is worth noting, if you've got a sideways moving market, it's probably not best to use the moving average as a confluence. Okay. If we go back up now and look at the 100 EMA, we can see once again, if I remove this, that it is touched less. But when it is touched again, you do see a reaction. Certain pairs within the market are going to react to different EMAs better. And that's what you need to do in your testing. You can see the moving average worked here. It was broken there. It was broken there. It worked here. Worked here. Was broken there. So you can see that NZD JPY may not be the best pair to use the 100 moving average on, but it is good if you are wanting to use the 50. If we then go up one more time to the 200 day EMA, what can we see? We can see same again. This pair does not seem to like this moving average 
that much, okay? You've only really got two respects here, but if we were to go through some other pairs, if we just look, for example, like this here, this is Euro New Zealand, you can see that the market seems to like this moving average. So it is dependent on the pair to what moving average works best, and that is something that you need to test and do. I don't have a list of moving averages that obviously I can say for you to use per pair because you need to do some of the work yourself. But just from this video, you can see that different moving averages are respected differently on different pairs. You can see here on EN, the 50 moving average is a very good indication of what price is doing. As you can see, a little break retest there. You had a break retest there with the EMA. You had a break retest here. So you can see that by combining the confluences within the chart, you can use the moving averages. So I'm hopeful that this video here has opened your eyes a little bit into EMAs, how to potentially use them. I don't want to make the video too long. So any questions on EMAs, please drop them in the bio or um, the description. And I will be more than happy to answer. Um, as you guys can probably see, there is daily episodes now of a trading vlog going up. So you can see how my trading day has gone. Some days are going to be busy, some days are not. But anyway, it is always worth having a look. So thank you very much guys for watching and I will see you in tomorrow's video.